Okay, so what I had done with this was took a piece of cardboard. I did a really rough sketch of an anchor and cut it out of a piece of cardboard. And I packed it with newspaper, much like I did the spokes in, um, in the wheel that I'm working on there. Uh, once I had that done, I completely covered it in masking tape. Once it was in the masking tape, I started putting on the paper mache. I did a layer of uh, newspaper and then I did a pink layer over that just so it was easy for me to see the different layers I was putting on. And now I'm waiting on a third layer of newspaper to dry. Once I get the third layer on, I'll start painting. But I just wanted you to be able to see what it looked like. And I hear you, rascal. And then up here at the end, I have used duct tape to make a metal ring coming out of the middle. And then duct tape to make a chain. We'll also go over that later in the video as well. Just wanted to kind of um, get you up to speed as to where I was at and how I did it. Okay, so I am on the final um, layer of paper mache to finish this up and then this will be ready to paint. So, I'm going to finish it with newspaper. Just getting the paper mache on. You can dip it or you can just rub it on, either one. With this particular type of paper mache paste, sometimes it gets it so wet it takes a long time to dry if I dip it. And so I just prefer to go in with my fingers and put it on there. Gets a little more control on how much paste it's absorbing. You always want to overlap just a little.
Okay, base coat is on. This is when you'll notice little things like, um, see if you can see it here. Do you see how the paper mache is coming up just a little bit there? Okay, this is when you'll have the opportunity to go in with maybe some glue and just tack that back down. Okay, it's not a big deal at all, but it's more noticeable once that coat of paint is on it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I found an old bottle of a silver metallic paint. If it's any good at all, I'm just gonna dry brush a little over this and you're also gonna see where after the paint is settled, you'll have white spots. And, um, but through layering your paints, uh, I tend to like to dry brush colors over colors like start with a base coat of gray, maybe even uh, wash on some browns and blacks, you know, to give it an old patinaed, dirty look, basically. So, let's see what this metallic paint looks like. Certainly not going to hurt it. If we don't like it, it'll be covered by a, another color anyway, right? Just going to stipple around. We don't want it to coat it completely. Just adding a layer is all we're doing. kind of like it so we're just going to continue pretty watery I don't think I'm going to do anything to the back of it because this is more of a two-dimensional a two -dimensional piece versus a three. If it was three-dimensional, I would give the same painting technique all the way around it. The stippling like that, you've seen what that does. We're going to do a little dry brushing. 
I did a little there, but I'm not sure if you were really paying attention at the time. But what dry brushing is, just a little different. You barely have any paint on the brush at all. I'm going to pour out just a little bit of black over here to the side. And then we're going to use, dip it barely into the black. And then I want to just take off most of it. Draw brushing is when you're going to go over the texture and it's going to stick mostly to the raised spots, okay? So let's do it. Let's do it right down through here. I'm not sure if the camera's even picking it up, but it just kind of smears the black right along the raised areas. Get a little more. The key is you don't want too much on there or it will just apply like paint. You don't want that. You want to be able to just highlight with it. And you want a light hand because you can always add layers. If you get too much, it's hard to take away. Now, don't worry if you do. I mean, what's the worst thing that happens? It looks like a big black streak. You paint gray back over it, let it dry, and go back in and do it again. Okay, guys, just to finish up the anchor... Because I'm pleased with the way it looks now. I'm not going to do anything else to it. Um, other than put a sealer on it. Or if you have some Mod Podge. You could also use something like that over it. I could actually do that since it's going to be indoors. But if it was an outdoor decoration. You would definitely want to put something waterproof over it. So, uh, But to finish this up. I just wanted to add a, few, a couple more links to the chain here. And I wanted to walk you through that. So, gray duct tape. And if you don't have it and you wanted to just uh, get a small roll, if you have a Dollar Tree near you, they're going to have really small rolls of this. It's a lighter weight duct tape, which is fine. Okay, you just cut. It really depends on how big you want your loop. Okay, so I'm going to go in and we're going to cut a strip and I'll show you how I do it. Does not mean it's the only way or the right way, just the way I do it. Okay, I cut a little notched out spot at the end and I'm going to do a trifold starting on the short side let me move this over a little okay so starting on the short side here where the little notches appear okay well on the short side I'm going to go in about a third of the way and then Go ahead and fold the other third. Gloves are not the best when you're trying to do this. So now once you've folded it, you still have that sticky edge there. Go into your loop. 
and just fold it over and attach it. Okay. So you make the chain as long as you want it for what I'm going to be using it for. This is plenty long. I just wanted to show you how to do that in case you did need a cheap chain sometime. All right. And we have a completed anchor.